Hello. How are you guys all doing? Ooh, just had some nice little uh, reverb or something on my speaker. That was fun. Yeah, how's everyone doing? We all right? Yes, no? Yes, so my plan then for those of you asking is I'm doing some of the sort of gas exchange stuff first. Um, have I done hemoglobin? I don't think I've done hemoglobin yet. Yeah, I'm doing hemoglobin in the future. So I'll do a session on that in, I don't know, a few weeks or so. Hey Jake, hey Dahlia, hey Dominic, hey Namrata. Ah, uh, what have you guys been up to this afternoon? I've been absolutely, I don't know, loving it. I've been sat listening to music, it's been good. Hello. Yeah, I'm good. I'm very good. I was just listening to Bruce Springsteen and the Beatles because although I may look like I'm in my 20s, I'm actually 70. You did English Lit and now you're bored. Doing bio homework. Triple maths. Sounds like you guys are having a great time. Just a biology test. How was your biology test? What did you do? Hmm. Biology statistics is one of my favourite topics. You have a bio test tomorrow. Two chemistry papers. United one knows how to live life. No lessons today I haven't missed. The Beatles are amazing. I agree, the Beatles are amazing. The best band ever. Can anyone name a better band than the Beatles? I'd be surprised. Plus Animal Transport. Nice, 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 nice. Right, I'm going to share my screen with you so you don't have to put it with my face being massive for a while. Um, for those of you who were posting um, Instagram things <laughs> um, to get a free account, someone had one of the creepiest Instagram things I think I've ever seen in my life, uh, where they basically said that at the moment, uh, their only date is me, and that is all they are doing is snap provides. It made me laugh a lot, but creepiest thing I think I've ever seen. <laughs> Ah, studying genetic variation. That sounds good. Have any of you done anything apart from just studying? Has anyone done anything remotely interesting recently? No. Are you guys going out very much? Like, I know you can't really go out very much, but do you have gardens or anything? Playing COD, that is a good shout. You went to work. <laughs> Zara's going for silence. Started knitting. Nice, yeah. Lots of people are learning new skills, right? So knitting. Uh, I'm doing loads of baking. I like baking. Rewatching Game of Thrones. I've no, I'm genuinely not heard of anyone rewatching Game of Thrones after the last season, but fair enough. I enjoyed it up until the last episode. Cycling. That's good. Eating. Everyone's eating. Binge watching Netflix. I just finished watching Afterlife, which was pretty, pretty sad. Tally hasn't been on here for a long time. Walking Dead. Walking Dead is good. I haven't watched it for a while, but coding. Nice. Right. Should we do some work or should we just talk? Should we just spend this lesson talking? Should we just talk, everyone? Oh, you guys can see that, I think. Right. I need to turn off my notification <laughs> from my people who are currently messaging me. Hang on. Da, 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 da. That was a song I was just playing. Right, there you go. All good. So, um, plan today then is we are going to do some um, gas exchange in fish, insects, and unicellular organisms. So, uh, before we start, I thought I'd remind you then that I'm doing this free account thing. So, at least one person uh, will be getting one free account um, for Snap Revise, which is pretty cool. So, someone's going to get a free account, which would be lovely. Um, what more can I say? I think it will last until about September. At least one person has already got this. Um, one person did an amazing post the other day, which made me laugh, which had like a phagocytic ruler or something. I liked that. But otherwise, that's what's going on. Um, I'm planning to give a coupon code at the very end of this session too. Uh, I think my Snap Revise guys should have sent you a link. Yes, there is a link for all the slides today. Um, what else are we saying? Someone's asking me what Purkinje tissue is. It's just conductive tissue in the heart. Um, 
And yes, yeah, so the heart, yeah, I will do the heart at some point. Um, I'm doing sort of gas exchange before I do all the mass transport stuff, but I will do the heart quite soon. Uh, otherwise, everyone else seems to ask me all the time, uh, how long is it? It's an hour. Everyone asks me what spec, it's all of them. Uh, apart, well, all of the British ones, all the main British ones, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So, right, let's get cracking, eh? First question. So the photograph below shows C. elegans, uh, which C stands for say and have datis for anyone who cares. Uh, a small free living nematode is a tiny little worm. An adult C. elegans consists of about 1,000 cells. Suggest why C. elegans does not need a specialized gas exchange system. Who can tell me? I honestly take all my questions from such a random source of places. There's a good chance it is early, so yeah, I don't know. Okay, so two marks. So how do we know how it does? Uh, why does it not need gas exchange? So it's, it's fairly thin, yeah? So a large surface area to volume ratio is good. Lives in water, that doesn't have too much to do with it. It lives in the soil as well quite frequently. Um, it can use diffusion between the cells. Yes, tell me more. So they're small, so a short diffusion distance, very, very good. Uh, tell me more about why you know that it is um, a short diffusion distance, because it's thin. There you go, someone said it. Permeable, very small. Last surface area being small. Good, 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 good. So uh, why is it not any specialized gas exchange system? So if I were answering this question, uh, I would probably start off by saying something along the lines of, um, it relies, on diffusion alone. Okay, the reason for that, um, it is small, so it has a very large surface area to volume ratio. Okay, if I was in an exam, I'd actually write it out properly, but I'm being lazy. Um, we can also say as well that it is very thin. So it said it's made of a thousand cells. So the whole thing is a thousand cells. So it's not going to be very thick. It's going to be only a few cells thick. Um, so it is very thin. Therefore, um, the diffusion distance is short. So I believe that was another thing you could have said. Oh, no, no, that was what you could say. So they are the main points, right? So if two marks, uh, you got a mark for that, you got a mark for that, and you got a mark for that. So diffusion is efficient enough to maintain its metabolic reaction. Indeed, yeah. So essentially, we would use diffusion, but the reason we can't is because we're too big to get oxygen to all of our cells. So oxygen... Well, any, any gas is going to diffuse quite slowly if it's got a very long way to go. So for us, um, oxygen is going to find it too difficult to get to like the center of our body to the cells there. So we need a special system. If you are uh, thin enough, you don't need to worry about that. Okay, so cells are within acceptable distance from external environment for diffusion, yes. Easy for oxygen to access for cells, yes. Um, when do these live classes start? Three o'clock every time. Cool. Yeah, still a fast question. Yeah, you barely missed anything, the person who just got here. Uh, okay, next question. So which of the following statements, nice and easy, A to D, correctly explains the feature of an efficient gas exchange surface? So layers are thin for a short diffusion distance. Good blood supply, so the system reaches equilibrium quickly. Increased surface area to reduce surface area to volume ratio. Ventilation takes place um, to reduce concentration gra gradient of dissolved gases. Ooh, I don't think any, never in my life have I seen you all agree. God, this is gonna be so embarrassing if it's wrong. Fortunately, you are right. So yes, um, which of the following statements uh, correctly explains a feature of efficient gas exchange? Um, there is a short diffusion distance. So layers will always, always, always be thin to make sure that diffusion can actually happen. So when you think about the size of exchange in humans, uh, it's the tissue fluid, isn't it? So the distance between the capillary and the cells is never very far away. So the diffusion distance is always short, right? So a good blood supply, uh, that prevents equilibrium. We don't want equilibrium to happen. 
Nice, Jacob. I like it. Um, there is an increased surface area to reduce surface area. That makes no sense. Uh, ventilation takes place to reduce concentration. No, it's going to increase the concentration gradient. Um, yes. Onions and ogres. Very nice. And they get little hairs, you know? If you leave an onion out for long enough, it'll grow little hairs. Mm. Right. Bony fish absorb dissolved oxygen from the water using gills. Water is passed through the buccal cavity and over the gill lamellae. The oxygen saturation of the blood and water changes as the water passes over the gills. Which of the statements A to D correctly describes the way that oxygen is transferred into the blood at the gills? So blood and water flow in a concurrent system with a constant concentration gradient between them. Blood and water flow in a countercurrent system with a constant concentration gradient between them. Blood and water flow in a concurrent system with a greater concentration gradient between them at the start. Blood and water flow in a, uh, a countercurrent system with a greater concentration gradient between them uh, at the start. Right. Firstly, what I'm spotting that concurrent has nothing to do with us. So it's either B or D. It's got to be one of them. So is there a constant concentration gradient or does it start with a really big concentration gradient that starts to then get smaller? What do you reckon? So I've got blood flowing in that direction and I've got water flowing in that direction. So the first place where my oxygen is going to be going to over here. So in terms of leaving the water, in fact, let's, let's label this up. I guess we could probably look at it here. So the first place, right, when the water's got the highest oxygen, it's actually going to the place where the blood has the most oxygen already. So the oxygen in the water here is high, but the oxygen over here in the blood is also high, right? The oxygen in the water here is in the middle, and the oxygen in the middle um, here, sorry, the amount of oxygen in the blood here is also in the middle. And then finally, the amount of oxygen in the water here is at its lowest. However, the amount of oxygen in the blood here is also at its lowest. So the point of the countercurrent system is to ensure that there is a constant concentration gradient. Okay, so the concentration of water, if it's really, really high, which it is over here, and let's change the color a sec. So if the amount of oxygen is really high, which it is over here, this is the highest amount, it's going to the place where there is already some oxygen, because I've already had some exchange prior over here, right? Where you have the least oxygen is over here, but this is also where you have the least oxygen coming from the water. So the concentration gradient, oh, my face is covering the diagram. I don't know if I can actually move my head. I don't think I actually have a way. Um, essentially, I'll draw it again. So blood. My face is quite big, to be fair. Um, so let's have blood going that way and water going that way. Probably should have done red and blue. That would have made so much more sense. It's a shame that I'm a bit stupid sometimes. But essentially what's happening, right? Um, the place with the highest concentration of oxygen in the water is going to be here. right? That's where you have the most oxygen. It's just as the water comes in. right? The place where I have the most oxygen in the blood is here because it's already had some exchange. So, although there's a lot of oxygen at the moment uh, in the water, there's also quite a lot of oxygen in the blood. Over at this end, the amount of oxygen in the water is actually quite low. The amount of water, uh, oxygen in the blood is also low, but still, there happens to be more oxygen in the water than the blood. So the whole point of the countercurrent system is you maintain a concentration gradient, it is a constant one, but, there is always more oxygen in the water than there is in the blood. <laughs> Thank you. My head is big. I totally agree. It's not helped that my hair is also big. I've exacerbated my big head by having big hair. So read into that what you will. Um, right. 80% of water gets through. Yeah. Weirdly, Empire of the Waves number two. Um, some specs say it's 90%. So somewhere between 80 and 90% of uh, water is used this way whereas it's about 50% if you use a parallel circuit. Oh, I like this question. So uh, different size mammals have different surface area to volume ratios. The table shows the surface areas and the volumes of four different groups of mammals. So Ori, cooked, blah, 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 Ori, 
I don't know how to say it. Arist, Aristolagus, Aristolagus. Okay, let's go for that. So Aristolagus. I don't know what kind of organism that is either. Uh, Equus, which is a horse. Mouse, which is mouse. Mus and Ratus, which is a rat. So. Which of these or options, A to D, is the correct order of surface area to volume ratio to the different mammals arranged from the largest to the smallest? I'm going to give you about a minute to do this because I don't think any of you can work this out straight away. How do you even work out the stuff? How do you make them all comparable first? How can I make sure that I can compare all of them? Because there's a step that you guys probably haven't done. Good, good. So you always do it in the um, format of X to one. Always like that. I don't know why, but all of the specs want you to do it this way around. You could think about it in terms of the size of the organisms. However, off the top of my head, I don't actually know what the first one is. Uh, Ori... Or a Cetalegus. Oh, it's a rabbit, apparently. There you go. Um, so, the way you do it then is if I want this to be one, whoops, if I want this to be one, like I've put it in here, then I need to divide this one by this one, right? So 0 0.48 divided by 2 times 10 to the minus 2, 18.26 divided by 2.24, uh, 1.9 times 10 to 3 over 7.2 to the minus 5 and 0.32 um, over 1.6 times 10 to the minus two. Okay, so to turn this one into one, you need to divide it by itself. So whatever you do to that side, you have to do to that side. So what is the surface area to volume ratio of the first one in a better, better format? Can someone tell me what the actual surface area to volume ratio is here in this format? Good. 24 to 1. What's the second one? Yep, 8.14 to 1. Next one. Or 8.15. I actually got 8.15 to be fair. It is 8.15. Uh, 26 to 1. Good. And then. twenty to one. Okay. So um, largest to smallest. The largest surface area is that one. So must has to be first. So it's one of those two. Uh, the second biggest one is this one. So the second one should be Ori. So it's, it's that one. Everyone agree? Does that make sense? Is it that one? So that's the biggest. That's the second biggest. That's weird. So a rabbit is apparently has a bigger surface area than a rat. Who would have thought that? I didn't know that. So maybe it's just that species, actually. So it should be a uh, mouse has a bigger surface area to volume ratio then Ori, so whatever it is, um, then Rattus, then Mus. Okay, so it should be C. Well done for getting that. Uh, okay, which of the cells below represented by the cubes A to D has a surface area of three to one? <laughs> Could have been a baby rabbit. That is true. Yeah, I know. It does make you think how big is a rat. Well, that no means how small is it? No. Yeah, oh, I don't know. How big is a rat? So for those of you who are just saying that, um, a small surface area, so large organism, as a general rule, equals small surface area to volume ratio, right? So a horse, equus, is going to have an absolutely tiny surface area to volume ratio. A little mouse is quite a big one. Uh, anyway. So to work it out, guys, as I'm sure you all know, um, to do a surface area, you have to find out the area. So one times one, right? One times one times by the number of uh, squares that there are. So if that is one and there happen to be six squares, it's one times one times six. The volume is one times one times one, which equals one. So that one's six to one. Uh, this one, so two times two times six is going to be 12, 24. 
Yep. And the volume is going to be two times two times two, which is eight. Is that the same as three to one? Yes, it is. And there's B. How does the ratio work? So all you're doing is you're working out what your surface area is. Then you do a colon and then you do your volume. So for this one, uh, I'm doing six times six because this square here, the area is six times six, which is 36. Oh, I just realized that's gonna be a weird one. Um, and then you times it by six, which I'm not gonna do in my head in case you get wrong. 216. So if that has a surface area of 216, the volume is gonna be six times six times six, which is also 216. So it's gonna be one to one, right? There's a lot of sixes there, yeah. So that's a weird one, very strange. Uh, that's how you do your ratio. Um, to change, if you change one of these numbers, so say I wanna put it in the format X to one, um, whatever I divide this by to get to one, so in this case, divide by 216, you also do the same to that side. Okay, so it basically, uh, you know in maths, if you, if you have, um, I don't know, A times B equals C, right? If I divide this side by B, it means I've got to divide that side by B. So it means you can get rid of your Bs, right? Uh, I would see these ratios as similar. So if I had um, one uh, to 10, if I divide this one on the right by two, then I've got to divide this one on the left by two as well. So that's the same as 0 0.5 uh, to five. So just see, whoops, just see this little colon as like an equal sign almost. Yeah, exactly. So bony fish and insects have different gas exchange systems. Both can be observed uh, by dissection. You should all know how to do this. You all should have done this. Um, well, most of you should have done this dissection at some point, unless you just missed it. Uh, describe how you'd carry out a dissection to display the maximum detail of either gas exchange system. So how do you dissect fish? How do you dissect an insect? You had it as a demonstration. Oh, that sucks. I remember my first year teaching, um, I told all my class that when you dissect, hold the knife, not in front of your face obviously, and cut away from you because you're less likely to slice into your fingers. And I had a kid um, who was a really nice kid called Mark. I really would love for Mark to be watching this. That would make me so happy. And basically he cut towards his hands and he had gloves on and he cut like that bit of his finger and he just came up to me and was like, oh, I think I cut myself. And I was like, oh, show me, come on, I'm sure you haven't. And then his glove was just filling up with uh, blood and it was really gross. Good times, good, good, good times. Uh, anyway, so it's not a Daphne practical, no. So cut along the gallbladder. No, you don't need to cut along the gallbladder. So use forceps or scissors, that's true. Place the gills in water. That is a very good point at the end, which most people don't know because it makes them all spread out. So I like that. Uh, cut two gills. What are the things that hold, um, what are those bits, you know, the stiff bits on the side of their neck? An exoskeleton is fine if you're talking about insects. So if we're talking about insects, uh, you would say, whoops. Remove exoskeleton. Skeleton. For one mark, second mark to reveal spiracles. Good, a perculum. Well done for knowing that, guys. So, not everyone needs to know that word, actually. Um, OCR definitely does. So, remove a perculum. And then you can get a second mark to display gill arches. Although I do like um, put in water, I would always say put in water because basically, as I'm sure lots of you know, uh, if you take a fish out of water, it doesn't, it doesn't like it very much. Um, that's because their gills can only be fully open in water. They collapse in on themselves. So if you put, it in, put them in water, as opposed to sticking together, almost like mascara does, you know, when you don't do your mascara very well. Um, if you put it in water, it all spreads out really nicely. Whereas if you don't, they all stick together and you can't see them very well. Jacob, are you telling me you don't do um, you don't do much mascara? So Kang, AQA is a f f fish practical required. Uh, not necessarily, but you have to have done a practical, like a dissection with AQA. Do you need to know the word operculum for AQA? No, you don't. Is it that you don't have to mention scalpels or tweezers? Describe who carry out dissection. It's not actually a mark scheme, but yeah, why not? Use scissors. 
or use a scalpel. So use scissors to remove the perculum, remove exoskeleton. LXL um, snab. I don't think so. I don't think you need to know where the perculum, although I'm not 100% certain. So Khadija, I would check. Does this mean this question wouldn't? Yeah, so this isn't an AQA question. I don't know where this question's from. Quite possibly OCR. LXLB do, there you go. Right, next. Um, figure three shows part of a diagram of the gas exchange system of an insect. Uh, name structure labeled A. I think OCR do uh, perculums. So fish could survive if its head and gills were in water. I think fish have to be moving to get water to flow over their gills. So maybe if you like moved its head about feasibly, but I feel that's quite unethical. Good. Well done, guys. So these are indeed the tracheoles. So that's a spiracle. That is a little hole which can open and close, almost like a stomata. Uh, trachea. So they have a, a tracheal system, which is this big tube. And then the tracheoles are these little guys coming down here. And then this is some cells of the muscle or something. Lovely. Um, describe how the trachea of a mammal is different from the trachea shown in figure three. They basically just open up their mouth and they open up their operculum to allow water to move through. That is not a human, no. We don't have tracheals. Rings of chitin rather than rings of cartilage, very good. So insects have chitin, not pronounced in any other way, despite how you almost certainly want to pronounce it. So uh, insects have chitin, um, mammals, have cartilage. What else? It is C-shaped, I'll give you that. What else? Good. Uh, human trachea, so let's have like insects and then mammals. Uh, so very small, very large. What else? In fact, very large probably won't give it, uh, won't, won't give it to you. So your teacher pronounces it chitin with a ch. Chitin? Nah, they're definitely not saying it right, it's chitin. Um, you have to say something a little bit more than this. So more than just small, what could you say is small? Describe the thing that's small, good, for diameter. So small diameter, whoops. Uh, whereas they have a very large diameter. Anything else? Yeah, volume as well, that would be fine. I guess we've done pretty much all we need to say. So a few other things uh, in my mark scheme, yep. So they have more than one. Um, they have more than sort of one trachea. We have like, we just have the one. So they've got this, this sort of more complex tracheal system where I'll have one here, they'll have one attached to another spiracle down here. They'll have another one down here. They have more than one. Um, we just have the one. We could say that our ones have smooth muscle and goblet cells and ciliated epithelial cells in them. They do not have that. They do not have the whole mucus system thing. Um, you can say that our one is longer, their one is shorter. Narrow lumen, yeah, I think I'd give that. Narrow lumen's here. Um, that'd be good. I'm happy with any of those. Oh, one thing to mention though, uh, in questions like this, make sure you say that, or make sure you word it like this. So mammals, um, trachea, are dot 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 whereas uh, insects are dot 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 right don't just say please 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 don't just say that mammals have longer ones or mammals have cartilage because you won't get any marks you've got to say both for each point otherwise you won't get it uh, of a chitin uh, no chitin is like spiraled it's really weird it's a weird material so it goes around in a spiral sort of shape so if you wanted to you could say that the chitin spiraled Uh, edXL A, I don't actually know if they do do insects. They definitely do fish. I don't know if they do insects. Edxl B, do they? Um, many organisms have evolved specialised gas exchange surfaces. One feature of these uh, structures is the large surface area to volume ratio. And, and chitin is also in fungi. You are correct. Uh, anyway, 
Describe how structures of the insect tracheal system and the fish gills provide a large surface area for gas exchange. So why is it that insects have uh, a large surf surface area and why is it that fish have a large surface area? Nope, that does not affect surface area. I know Namrata that there is an answer about that, but nothing to do with it. No lignin, that's some plants. Not small. Ooh, good. Um, Ariadne, if I pronounce your name right. You are totally right. So uh, fish have a very large surface area to volume ratio. Because um, lamellae, in fact, let's say numerous lamellae provide a large surface area to volume ratio. So describe how the structures of the insect. Yeah, so numerous lamellae are present. Uh, what do insects have? Asio. Oh, every time. I love the Harry Potter. Uh, did you guys see the other day that um, loads of celebrities were like reading out Harry Potter? It's like a website you can go to. I think Daniel Rad Radcliffe and David Beckham are on it, which is weird. Um, but branched, that's the keyword, branched or numerous branched tracheals. Okay, essentially having loads of branches of these tracheals is gonna mean that the surface area is very, very, very large. It's almost like, um, it's almost like the internal structure of our lungs, right? Uh, towards the bottom, there's loads of branches that go to the alveoli. Insects have a similar thing where there's so many branches um, that the tracheals are actually quite, um, they have a really big surface area to volume ratio. Okay, cool. Same with um, glycogen and uh, amylopectin. Because it's so branched, you've got a bigger surface area for enzymes to work on. Similar kind of concept here. Right, an amoeba is a single-celled organism that lives in water. Gas exchange in an amoeba occurs between the water and the cytoplasm. It's a cool picture. Uh, using the information shown in the graph uh, and your own knowledge, suggest how gas exchange occurs in the amoeba. Four marks. Four marks of this. How does gas exchange happen in the amoeba? Empire of the waves, absolutely not. Good. So diffusion. Okay, so when we say from high to low concentration, what are we talking about? Simple diffusion is also true. Through the cell surface membrane, lovely. So definitely diffusion. Uh, definitely through the cell surface membrane. Well done for saying cell surface membrane and not just membrane. <laughs> um, 100%. Uh, it's gonna be oxygen and carbon dioxide, either going, um, well, down basically. So O2 and CO2 are diffusing down the concentration gradient. Very good. Um, someone mentioned earlier that it is happening via diffusion because there is a very large surface area to um, volume ratio. Uh, anything else we could possibly say? Selectively permeable, yeah, I think that's probably um, useful to say the membrane is selectively permeable. Are flagella and flagellum the same? Yeah, flagella is um, plural, whereas flagellum is singular, I think. Any membrane, um, would that mean that any membrane this specifies is a cell surface? Yeah, basically, uh, I'm talking about this membrane here, right? The cell surface membrane is what, the one that uh, diffusion is happening through. I think that's a see they've got some weird things in the mark scheme here which I think are worth mentioning so you can say uh, to get a few more marks that diffusion is going to go through the cell surface membrane 
um, it's going to be oxygen and carbon dioxide diffusion down my concentration gradient. You could say um, that there is a very thin uh, diffusion pathway or whatever. So thin diffusion pathway you can mention T. And I guess that's because there is no cell wall. There is just one membrane to cover and the membrane is thin. So thin diffusion pathway. For some reason as well, they've also said that small nonpolar molecules will get you a mark. So I guess you could say um, that this is the diffusion of small nonpolar molecules, such as oxygen and carbon dioxide, through the cell surface membrane, um, which is very thin, so there's a small diffusion pathway, um, down the concentration gradients, and this is efficient because there's a large surface area to volume ratio or something like that. So do you have to mention that waste gases go out? Uh, you don't have to. Uh, so there are four marks, right? I'll read exactly what I said. So you can say, uh, through the cell surface membrane for one mark, very thin, second mark, oxygen enters, third mark, carbon dioxide leaves, fourth, small nonpolar was a word that they credited, diffusion is another one, concentration gradient is another one, and large surface area to volume ratio. So the rate of diffusion is faster as diffusion distance is shorter, yes. So some of you will have come across something called fixed law. Basically, um, diffusion is proportional to um, the surface area to volume ratio multiplied by the concentration gradient over uh, diffusion distance. Right, if you haven't come across it, it's nothing too hard. Essentially what we're saying, if I turn all of these numbers into one, uh, one times one over one, then if I were to double my surface area, and turn that number into two, then two times one divided by one is two, right? So if I double one of the top numbers, it doubles this number. Uh, if I double the number at the bottom, if I make the diffusion distance twice as big, so that one's two, um, one times one is one divided by two is 0 0.5, so it's now half, right? So basically, Fick's law is saying that if you increase the surface area, let's say by five times, that will increase the diffusion distance by five times. Oh, sorry, the diffusion rate. I should have said written um, by five times. If I increase the concentration gradient by two times, that will increase the rate by two times. If I double the diffusion distance, that will, however, half my diffusion rate. Okay. Um, no, fixed law is not in AQA spec. Um, teachers like to teach it because it used to be, but it's no longer anymore. Uh, yes, I will go through tracheal fluid in insects. I haven't yet. Uh, cool. Right, figure one, oh, really weirdly, I'm doing it now as well. Uh, figure one shows the stages of development of an insect called a damselfly. These are, you can actually find these. If you ever look for um, an insect in a pond, if it's got three little tails, it's a damselfly. Anyway, the adult damselfly uses a tracheal system for gas exchange. Explain three ways in which the insect's tracheal system is adapted for efficient exchange. Uh, OCR do fix law, yes. Uh, Edexcel do it too. So how is an insect's tracheal system adapted? So many tracheals, therefore what? How does it maintain its concentration gradient? Spiracles open and close and is controlled only if it's absolutely necessary to reduce water loss. Yeah, but arguably it'd be better if you didn't have them at all in terms of gas exchange. Branch tracheals provide a large surface area. There you go. So, mark one. Branch tracheals provide a large surface area to volume ratio. Good blood supply. Hmm. Do they give that? Doesn't look like it. No, I can't give that, sorry. What else? Small, so short diffusion distance. They're not that small, they're not tiny. So I don't think you could feasibly get it. You need to talk about what bit is small. Ventilation, pumping air into the trachea. Ooh, yes. If you could mention that rule, you could get a mark for that. Thin diffusion pathway, no, I'd like something a bit different to that. Gases diffused into tracheal fluid to make it get, mm, no. Oxygen transfer between tissue and tracheal by tracheal fluid, no. Rich blood supply, mm, it's vague. Like if you say the circulatory system is good, 
Um, that's going to move any oxygen away. You could feasibly get a mark, but it's not, not in my uh, mark scheme here. Oh, yeah, they do have blood, but blood isn't actually how they transport. Um, yeah, that's a very good point. Blood isn't how they transport oxygen anyway, so it doesn't matter. Blood is just used to glucose. Tracheals go straight to the cells. Ooh. Ooh, maybe if you could tell me a bit more about that. Tracheals are thin stuff. So, okay, I will give this. So, uh, from the mark scheme directly, it does say uh, tracheals have thin walls, so there is a short diffusion distance. Okay, so what is this stuff about the fluid in the tracheals? Does anyone know this? No heme, no heme, that's nothing to do with this. Moist surface to increase the rate of diffusion. No, that's gonna slow it down. No, fluid filled ends. What is this fluid filled end? So water in the tracheals to move by osmosis into muscles drawing air in. That is very good. Why does that happen? So let's let's have a little drawing, right? Uh, here is a tracheal. Here are some muscles. Okay, so let's say that this insect is now gonna start, oh lovely, someone mentioned lactate too. So same person, well done. Um, if this insect starts to do a ridiculous amount of exercise, so it starts to run like crazy for a few minutes, right? Essentially what happens is in these muscles, you produce lactate. Okay, what lactate does, because it's soluble, is it's going to dissolve and it's going to cause the water potential of my muscles to decrease. Okay, now something that some of you do know and some of you don't, you know, is that there is fluid that sort of fills up the end of your tracheals, uh, your tracheals. So this fluid um, will sit there fairly happily, but as soon as there's a lower water potential outside, it begins to move out. Okay, so the fluid at the end moves out. When the fluid moves out, it basically produces suction inside of this tube in the same way that the xylem does. It'll basically produce suction in this tube which is gonna draw any air in. Okay, so the volume, the volume inside is decreasing, so in a gas pressure kind of way, the volume inside decreases, um, the pressure inside is also going to decrease, which means that the pressure outside is higher than inside, so it's gonna force um, any air in. So water moves by osmosis, um, and um, basically it will draw air in, and also, Diffusion happens faster in a gas anyway, rather than going into a liquid first and then into the muscle. So we could say fluid in the uh, ends is drawn out. Everyone always forgets this as well. So try, try and learn this. I know it's quite difficult, but everyone always forgets. Fluid in the ends is drawn out. Um, I should say tracheal ends. It's drawn out when insects um intense do intense exercise i love that we actually know this as well like how do we know this which scientists found this out i love like things like that um so fluid is drawn out when insects do intense exercise and i'll put in brackets lactate in muscle lowers water potential then we can say air is drawn in, um, which is due to pressure. So air is drawn in and exchanges quicker in a gaseous phase. Uh, yes, I can read the mark scheme. It is actually a bit more basic than this. Um, so you can get the marks for not writing it as uh, concise, well, as much, you don't have to write as much as I just wrote. So in the mark scheme, uh, tracheals have thin walls, so short diffusion distance. Highly branched, so large number of tracheals, short diffusion distance, mm, vague. Highly branched, so there is a large surface area. Uh, tracheal provides tubes full of air, so fast diffusion. Mm. 
fluid in the end of tracheals that move out uh, into tissues during exercise, so faster diffusion uh, through the air, or you could say the, the I don't know, that doesn't make sense. Uh, or you could say the body can be moved. Um, basically, rhythmic muscle contraction can also pump uh, carbon dioxide out and air in. What are you saying? So we can't mention spiracles. No, spiracles has nothing to do with this. Spiracles just prevent water loss. Insects don't exercise. When they fly, their metabolic rate will go crazy, like crazy high. So like a hummingbird, I can't remember what their heart rate goes to when they fly, but it's insane. Insects get shredded. <laughs> Have you not seen... Um, these pictures of like kangaroos being like really buff with like massive six packs. Basically, what insects are like under their exoskeleton. When you dissect their exoskeleton, they're actually ripped. Uh, right. Ooh, this is a good question, Kai. I imagine lots of you won't know the answer to this. Uh, right, let's have a go at this. So, a scientist measured the size of each gill lamella uh, of the gills of 40 damselflies. Uh, his results shown in the table. Calculate the mean surface area of one side of the gill lamella. Assume that the gill uh, lamella is a rectangle and give your answer to an appropriate number of significant figures. And then include the percentage error of surface area in your answer. Uh, wing movement, no, you'd want to say um, exercise intensity as opposed to wing movement. Do each keel systems have a membrane? It's not a cell, it's made of cells. So yeah, there will be lots of membranes. Uh, you couldn't really get ventilation in here too well, Amelia, if I'm totally honest. You could, um, oh, maybe you could, maybe you could say, um, hang on, there's a term which I've, abdominal pumping, which is something that insects do. Abdominal pumping is going to cause uh, the external medium to move a bit. You could say that. Right, anyway, how do you work out the surface area here? This is the easy part. Good. Okay, so we're assuming it's a rectangle. Don't know why. Okay, in terms of the number of significant figures, what are we gonna go for? I would go for probably three because that's what they've given us earlier. So let's go for 9.85. So the general rule is either copy the number of significant figures or do one fewer than what they've done. So 9.85 is fine or 9.9 .9, um, would be okay as well. Okay, how do we do this uncertainty bit? Not 6.09. Nope. Nope. That's actually a fairly straightforward um, little kind of equation. So you look at the uncertainty for this one. And because they're not related to each other, I can't do, I can't add the numbers up and then um, double the uncertainty or any of that. So what you do, because these numbers are unrelated, they're just measurements, uh, you do 0.19 over 1.61 plus 0.41 over 6.12 times 100. Okay, so 0.19 over 1.61 plus 0.41 over 6.12 times 100, 18.5%. Ooh, and you probably should do a unit here, millimeters squared. No, um, I'm not doing one side, where did I say that? Assume the gill lamella is rectangle, give your answer appropriate number of significant figures. Yeah, no, you're doing percentage error, uh, percentage error of the surface area of it. So I'm looking at the whole thing. I have used the surface area. I've used the length of one surface and I've used the length of the other surface because for each one, you're basically, um, for, e for each surface I've had to measure. So I've got some uncertainty in each one. So that's why you do that. I'm sorry. Scientists measure the size of each gill lamella of the gills, 40 damselfly. Calculate the mean surface area of one side of the gill lamella. Oh, that is weird. 
Yeah, the answer says 9.85. In my mark scheme, it says credit 9.85 and 18.5. So maybe it's a weirdly worded question. One side of the gill... Oh, what are we talking about? So if they're looking at a gill lamella, which looks like kind of one of them, doesn't it? So you're just looking at this surface area, that's it. You're looking at one side of it because in reality, it's actually a 3D structure, isn't it? Right, so we're looking at side A as opposed to side B. So to be fair, if you times that number by two, that would be the surface area of the entire gill lamella. So that's what it means. It's assuming it's a rectangle, a 2D shape and not a 3D shape. That's what they're on about. Weirdly worded question though, I agree. Um, okay, next. We'll just do a couple more. So um, here is a damselfly lava's gill. Suggest two ways a student could have improved the quality of their scientific drawing. What's wrong with this drawing? Don't tell me that it's a beautiful drawing. Good, easy, do not shade. Uh, good, um, so what else did you say? Ensure lines are continuous is the word in May used. So ensure continuous lines, so joined up. I think you'd get it for joined up. So continuous lines, um, good. Add a magnification, I'd get you a mark. Um, add further labels, so they've only labeled the cuticle and the hair. Whereas we know that this is a tracheal and we know that that's uh, the trachea. We know that um, that's the spiracle. We could label a lot more. Uh, and don't cross the label lines. So that they've crossed here. You shouldn't do that. You should have them separate. Things like that. That's fine. Uh, reject color in. Reject using an electron microscope. Reject to use a sharp pencil. We don't know how sharp their pencil was, do we? So we can't say that. Yes, so explain two ways in which the structure of a fish gill is adapted for efficient exchange. Just to show you that these questions come up all the time. How is it adapted, a um, fish gill? Be better at drawing. <laughs> I like it. What about for the melee? I don't, I'm not too bothered about secondary or primary as one. Well. What about the lamellae? Many lamellae increase surface area to volume ratio. Do not forget volume. Lamellae increase. Good. What what is thin out of interest? Counter current. The fish gill. Hmm. I don't actually think they credit that. So I don't know why they wouldn't they. The structure. Can a counter current system be a structure? Okay, it's more talking about the flow. The structure is still the same. It's still a two blood vessel, one blood vessel and one water way or something. I don't think you'd get it for counter current. I think they're being horrible, but I don't think you'd get it. Mammy lamellae. So thin diffusion pathway. I just need to tell me what's thin. So something, therefore, a thin diffusion pathway or short, I prefer short diffusion pathway. What is thin? The gill lamellae are thin. Yeah, I'll give you that. Gill lamellae are pretty thin, right? Um, ooh, I would say as well that the thing that makes up the lamellae is an absolute ridiculous amount of capillaries that look like that. So the capillaries are also thin. So I would say uh, thin capillaries, and lamellae, um, therefore a short diffusion pathway, right? Yeah, the lamellae, even though it's a fish, they're still one cell thick, right? So in case you're not sure what a lamellae looks like, essentially, you've got this long structure like this, and you've got uh, a blood vessel, which uh, will, well, it will go basically this way. And then you've got like this branching nature of it as well, where the blood can sort of come up here, uh, it will move up there, Move up there, move up there, move up there. And then I'm going to definitely mess up which lines to join up. Join up that one, join up that one. There you go. 
right? So the blood is going to uh, come in down at the bottom. If you bear with me. So blood is going to come in this way, and then it's going to go through there, then it's going to go down. It's going to go that way, then go down. Go that way and go down. Water, on the other hand, is going to go that way. Uh, okay, cool. Uh, final few, two more. So explain how the countercurrent mechanism in fish ensures that the maximum amount of oxygen passes into the blood. So can anyone describe this? Good blood supply. It might be. I don't necessarily think it would be, but it might be. There is a good blood supply, which allows a concentration gradient. So if you did say that, yeah, um, I reckon you could get away with that feasibly. Concentration gradient due to good blood supply. Although, is that talking about the structure of the lamellae? It's more talking about the circulatory system, so maybe not. Right, water and blood move in opposite directions. This question comes up all the time, by the way. Water and blood move in opposite directions. Good. Water always has a higher oxygen concentration Therefore, we can say the concentration gradient, and this is the bit which will get you the mark, is, and then learn this, maintained across the gill lamellae. Done. Or the entire gill arch. Yeah, I'd give it for gill arch as well. Or the entire gill, right? So concentration is maintained. It's that word there that I want. So a concentration, um, let's say, in fact, gradient, is maintained across the gill lamellae slash gill slash arch. So. Right, final question. Abdominal pumping, love it, takes place during vigorous activity in insects. This causes regular squeezing of the tubes of the gas exchange system. Scientists investigated the effect of abdominal pumping on the pressure in tubes and the volume of carbon dioxide released by the insect. Here are his results. Describe and explain the results. This is two marks. Uh, the second line here said water always has a higher oxygen concentration than blood. So pressure. Pressure, yeah, okay, cool. So uh, we want to say pressure is, rel is re linked Pressure correlates with CO2 release. Agreed. Pumping is doing what then? Pressure forces carbon dioxide out. Lovely. What does that cause? It doesn't necessarily cause oxygen to come in. It might draw some oxygen in. It's not expiration. If you've got loads of CO2 outside, and uh, so fat, what are you doing? So you're, you had a high concentration of CO2 inside. Hmm. Maybe that's not what I wanted to say, actually. So abdominal, in fact, let's have a look. In fact, apparently that's what you need to say. Yeah, I was going to say something about it's going to cause a concentration gradient, but thinking about it, it just means that CO2 inside is going to be very low and carbon dioxide outside is going to be also quite low. So it's probably not making much of a concentration gradient. Basically, all this shows is that this insect um, is using pumping of its body to basically get carbon dioxide out. So the mark scheme says abdominal pumping is linked to carbon dioxide release. I've said that. Abdominal pumping raises the pressure in the body. That's another mark you could have got. Yeah, fair enough. Uh, so I guess they've made the link between abdominal pumping and pressure. And then finally, air is pushed out of the body, dash, air, slash, carbon dioxide. 
side moves down pressure gradients and that's it so all this scientist has really found out is that when the insect pumps it causes carbon dioxide release so yeah it's just it's just forcing carbon dioxide out right i haven't actually thought of anything yet so bear with me hang on don't go anywhere stay where you are um um uh, oh i've got one so have you ever wondered um how a fish can basically um do so well so it lives in an environment where there's so 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 little oxygen the amount of oxygen dissolved in water is so low and yet it survives and it doesn't just survive it thrives that fish doesn't survive it thrives now if you wanted to be like a fish and not just survive your a-levels but indeed thrive with your a-levels despite not having any teachers well snap revise is basically like a counter current system so knowledge flows in one direction and money flows in the other direction and based on that counter current system there is always a very very high concentration gradient where there is always more knowledge than there is money always 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 more knowledge than money so the amount of knowledge will always have a concentration gradient maintained regardless to money let's just pretend pretend money doesn't exist and basically what snap revise will do wasn't going to be a poem but yeah um what snap revise will do is it will act as a um, um a means to maintain a concentration gradient of knowledge into your brain and that is why you should sign up there you go that is my insight of the day no in all seriousness um snap revise is very good and not only do you have stupid things like that that i come up with um there is much much more so for instance uh, i am doing a web class every single day apart from friday because i have to make stuff but i do web classes basically every day and i tend to do more than one a day so look, i've got one on thursday um going over mitosis i'm doing hemoglobin on monday i'm doing fractionation mitotic index and drawing on tuesday permeability i'm doing on tuesday statistical eh, statistical tests on wednesday membranes on thursday uh circulation clotting cvd and the liver randomly and yeah basically i do loads of classes all the time right i do drop-in sessions where kids will say something along the lines of oh do you mind if we go over taxonomy evolution and surf to volume ratio and i'll be like yeah damn right let's do that um i will some kid will say let's do transpiration in the heart and i'll be like yeah let's do that someone will say let's go over the immune system and clotting. And I'll be like, yeah, sure, let's do that. Let's do it twice. Let's carry on. Let's keep up the flow, right? Um, not only that, I also do a book club, which is fun. Um, so they are one element of Snap Arise. That is like uh, the absolute top end, um, most maintained concentration gradients. Again, think about little fish. Um, but we also do a lot of other things. We do a lot more sort of more basic things um, to help you learn. So this concentration gradient Maybe you're not as good as a fish's count, and not a fish, as a shark's counter current system. Maybe that's with the web classes. Maybe you could be a little um, guppy. They have a little fish that people have, right? Maybe you want the guppy system. So you could have like the, the uh, nice little videos where you start off by doing a little quiz, and the quiz will say, I don't know, uh, blah, 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 what is this, what is that, what is the other? And you go through it and you might find that you know half of it, right? As soon as you find out you know half, it will load up the videos that you clearly didn't know and it'll make them all go orange. I didn't actually complete the test, so it didn't, get, didn't do it for me. But this one's orange, I haven't done it, right? You then have a nine minute video, a four minute video, a 10 minute video and another quiz, right? So after you've learned all this stuff, um, you have another quiz and hopefully you will have learned something. And um, basically this guy will go through a quiz. Oh no, there you go, there is a quiz. Uh, you then get some exam questions where this bloke will, where is he? There he is. He will go through some exam questions with you just to help you to feel a bit more confident. And let's say that you didn't understand a free domain system like this person didn't. And they've asked me a question and they've said that they can't find them a textbook. And then I've just told them, oh no, you definitely do need to know this. Um, then maybe that could be something which would really help, right? After that, we have, well, this one actually doesn't, but we also have just basically endless exam questions. So classification is a bit of a weird one because apparently it doesn't, but I know that this one does. Um, there is an exam pack, right? So you can go through some exam questions to your heart's content. 
until you're happy that you know stuff and see the solution. Uh, after that, if you're still not sure, um, you can look at the revision guide, check that out, go through it, see what that's telling you, print it, tattoo it on your skin, uh, get your parents to test you. One of my best students I ever had, basically uh, his parents got sick of him talking. So he used to teach inanimate objects like facts. So he would tell his radiator that lipids um, contain carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. So you could do that. Um, if I haven't convinced you, which I understand I might not have done, then what I would recommend for you is not that, not that either. Maybe that one. Yeah, that'll do. Is basically, oh, look, there I am. How weird. Basically, go on to Snap Revise's website. Okay, go on to Snap Revise's website and, uh, oh, you can get a free account for a bit as well. But go onto our YouTube site even, and you should find that there are little bits that tell you when some things are happening. So if you go home, uh, there are some upcoming live streams, right? Like, why not go along to an equilibrium session? Even if you don't do chemistry, why not just go along? Why not go over some proofs if you do maths? That's actually a bit of a stupid idea. If you want to know more about mammals and plants, right? Set a reminder for my uh, session, and then we'll go over that at the time, okay? Otherwise, and I'll get to some of your questions in a second for any of you who have questions and facts. Let's keep that there for now. Let's put you back over there and let's put this back up again. Um, I've got my discount code and stuff to give you. So can anyone guess what it's going to be this week? There you go. So if you want to get a discount for Snap Provise, if I have persuaded you, then here is a nice discount code, Gas Exchange 10, which will get you 10% uh, off, not 10% off, £10 off, even better. So it'll get you £10 off. Um, you can use that. Uh, I think you've only got until tonight to do that. And otherwise, if I remind you, uh, if you post on our Instagram or if you tag us in your story on Instagram showing that you're having a great time, there's a very good chance that you'll win a free account worth about 200 quid. Um, the person who won it a few weeks ago, only four people entered. So there's a one in four chance that someone won it, right? This week, there's been a few more. But um, the most creative, uh, I will probably give their prize to, okay? Otherwise, any other questions? Oh, I'm glad you enjoyed my uh, fish thing. But I am now getting blinded by all this light coming in through my window. More knowledge and money. Yeah, that's, that's what I'm going for. That's what I'm going for. Web class and drop-ins are my absolute fave. Good, Tally. Got it in the morning. It's good. Help them with promo. Cool. <laughs> well, me maker, I don't care, but thank you. So, <laughs> sales pitches are better when they include science. Right, I will try my best to keep this up. Cool. Anyone got anything they want to know? Any quick questions? Can bacteria adapt and become resistant to antibiotics? Yes, of course they can. That is why antibiotic resistance is a thing. Anyone still here? No? Okay. Right, in which case, guys. Oh, there you go. Masimi, you are here. Masimi, why are you always here? <laughs> Melia, right, why are you here? Guys, what do you want? What do you want? What can I do? Or are you going? Do you want to say goodbye? Oh, sugar beast boy. Nice name. Right, guys, have a lovely afternoon and I will catch you again at some point next week. Okay? Oh, oh I'm glad you love me. That's a bit creepy, but it's, it's nice that you feel that way. I feel like you guys should, I don't know, when, when lockdown ends, you should go and do something as opposed to sitting watching <laughs> Snap Revise videos on YouTube. No, you should carry on doing that, actually. I misspoke, but definitely do something as well. Right, anyway. See you later, guys. I'll catch you again another time.